Hey, Damn, I'll be yeah. right back. Hey, I'll be right back. I think one of my kids set the alarm off in my car. Right <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tuesday, <laughs> February 25th, 2014. Ed Camp, Tulsa. Toby, take it away. Hi, we're going to talk about a little bit about EdCamp. So EdCamp is a new form of teacher professional development run for teachers by teachers. Now that's not saying that uh, admins and students can't come, but the idea is that the teachers themselves uh, come up with the sessions. There are no presenters, or there shouldn't be anyway, no presenters, no uh, pre-planned uh, PowerPoints per se. You don't walk into a session, set your bags down, and listen for an hour or an hour and a half. It's an active participatory professional development where teachers come up with the sessions on the spot that day and they share their expertise, they share their experiences, and they share uh, what they know uh, at, at the event. And so the idea, again, is that they mingle together and uh, come up with sessions together. Um, if they have a question about a practice, if they have a question about a, a tool or a policy, you can write that on the boards to, to come up with, uh, uh, with a session that, that folks can come in and do. Um, the main, uh, one of the main practices that's different at, at EdCamp and is uh, you vote with your feet. If you come into my session that I'm uh, leading, I'm not talking the entire time, but I'm leading the conversation and marshalling the conversation, and it doesn't fit what you need, you use the rule of two feet and you walk out, which is very different than traditional professional development. Right. Um, you choose what matters to you at the time. You choose the PD that's going to help you either do something in your classroom or help you as a professional or help your students do something. Uh, it is the focus of Egg Camp. Again, very grassroots, very, it, they tend to be tech centric because the word generally flows out uh, through Twitter and other social media, but mostly Twitter. Um, so you get the kind of people you know, if, if there was a birds of a feather session at a huge conference, it would be the egg camp audience generally. So, mm -hmm. and the twelve people that they pulled along with them. So that's four minutes, but I'll take it. <laughs> and so, when you're when you're selling, if you're if you're promoting this within Jinx, one thing I term is just to use the term unconference. It's that's yep. that's kind of what's because it is different. Um, people, I think, are really surprised. We had a bunch of Oklahoma City people that we were sitting with at lunch at the last one. And they all just were sitting there like, I told, I felt like I was supposed to come to this, so I was going to come to the morning, and I can't believe how much I've learned. And that just people are excited because it's not you sitting there all day. It's the, you asking questions, talking about what you're doing, and it's groups of support. I mean, I helped to um, – there was one cell sh session I helped lead, and I learned a tremendous amount during doing it and created a website based off what I learned um, you know, from somebody else in the session. And so we just all share what we have. And so – the time flies by and it's invigorating. So I would sell that to your teachers that it's a, a different type of thing. Um, you know, if you can ever provide any institutional support to say, well, we'd count this as professional development for district or anything, and that may not be something you can do this year. It may take time. But that's always encouraged to see this as a legitimate way to get professional development. So I'd be curious um, if Rob and Lisa might share with the group what interests them of, about be, you know, becoming involved with EdCamp and hosting mm -hmm. an EdCamp. Rob? Well, I know that... <laughs> besides, besides, it's awesome. <laughs> well, and that's what I heard on uh, just following it on Twitter the, the weekend that it was in Oklahoma City. It, and all the time leading up to that... Oops, I don't know where I went there. Uh, it just sounded like the kind of professional development that's, that's new, that's innovative, that allows people to explore areas that they might not think about. And they can kind of tailor their own learning for that day. Mm -hmm. We have done some things up here with some of our leaders uh, based on the open space technology model. So that that model of having people facilitate a session, the unconferenced or the uh, non-pre-planned uh, sessions. <laughs> I like the pirate hat. Well, um, <laughs> it has worked well and we've we've had fun although it's only been for an hour and a half, two hour session so this will be a little bit different when we're scheduling for four to six hours. But uh, I'm looking forward to learning a lot. And I can tell that you guys have a lot of uh, technology back. Marty, hang out. I know Lisa, I think it's hers as well. 
So uh, it is, yeah. Uh, and like Rob said, we've been aware of the the whole Ed Camp piece. I actually saw the initial Oklahoma City session on Twitter and had followed some information. Another one of our teachers who's very uh, apt at implementing and integrating technology had mentioned it to me last year and said, you know, we really ought to do this at Jinx. And I said, yeah, that's a great idea. And we just didn't have that let's get on it and do it kind of thing. So when I saw mm -hmm. Rob talking about it uh, this year, it's like, you know what, why not do it now? So that's why we're here. Fantastic. And, and Rob, I'll just jump in there for a second. The way you found EdCamp is exactly the way I found EdCamp. I was sitting at home reading articles and watching an OSU football game. I had my iPad open. Uh, I had three articles in front of me. My laptop was open. I had my phone and my everything was going. I had six different feeds coming in. And I was doing some research and I found uh, this. my Twitter started blowing up about exactly what I was studying. I said, now hold on, these are K-12 teachers who are talking about this. Who are these people? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's at Ed Camp. Well, what's Ed Camp? So I pulled it up, Ed Camp KC in 2010, and it and it just it sparked an interest. And uh, I tweeted the guy, and I said, what is this that you're doing? And he sent me a link to Ed Camp KC. I drove up there the next year, and it, it changed the way I think about how teachers need to learn, or teachers want to learn. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, and to answer the question on PD, at least for Jinx, yes, we will be offering uh, professional development credit for this. Great, that helps a lot. Um, just to, to, because you know it's that push teachers need to get there, and um, so it makes a difference. Um, well, so not so we don't take all night. So what do we need to start doing? Our, we've got a lot of veterans here who've done planning. So what are the first steps? I can before I forget, because I know this is one thing I'll forget. If we want T-shirts. We need to kind of decide. We're, we're basically on the borderline. Um, my buddy in Oklahoma City has, is with his t-shirt company would make t-shirts. We just to make a decision about what kind we want, and he can come up with designs, and we could get that going. Um, and he'll basically do it at cost, but they'll probably they'll still you know people will still have to buy their shirts. So just to, I know that's not this is not the most critical thing, but do we want t-shirts? Yes. <laughs> That's okay. So. <laughs> Do, so then my other question then is um, two questions. How high of quality do we how high basically it's a price thing. So if we get we get higher quality, you can get more colors and it's like gonna you know be a few bucks more. Um, the high end would be in the in the low twenties, probably. Um, or he could he could probably get down to somewhere closer to fifteen. Um, for it, but he won't make us crappy shirts because it's he'll put his company name on it. So, so hey, that's, Ann, can you hold the T-shirt up from Kansas again? Yeah, I can share that with Rob and Lisa. Yeah, I he think made it'd be this. cool to have the Ed Camp logo coming out of a, a a font of oil out of the top of a Derek. But that's just oh, nice. that's cool. Oh, the yeah. the Tulsa Ooh. oil guy. Ann loves ah, her shirt. That makes sense. I think Ann's frozen. Is Ann I frozen? Think she's not. She's no, no she just loves her shirt. He's I do. There it is. <laughs> so soft. They're, they're just really soft. Show us, show us the design the again. The logo is really cool. So this is the one he made for Ed Camp Kansas. It's a sunflower for the Sunflower State, and it's got the little Ed Camp logo in there, and it's really they're really soft material and stuff. So what I'll do is we're just going to have to communicate this. Here's the deal. He has to do a minimum <laughs> order of 24. So if everyone is in support of it, like we, what I would say is we need to all just commit to making sure we at least sell two each. And what that means is if we buy one, we find someone else to make sure they buy one. Because the thing he he does is he just puts his own money forward for us. We just have to make sure we sell them. So it's kind of a commitment to him. But I think twenty four is pretty low. Don't you guys feel comfortable being able to do twenty four? Oh yeah, that's a good we, number. Yeah, we just did organizer T-shirts last year for, uh, for our first one. So okay. Well, and so we'll do at least that, and we'll it will probably run out, and then you know we'll have an idea of what we can do for the next year and be able to plan with more time. But is every would everyone commit who's who's planning on going to buying one at least? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I owe somebody for my last one because I never got anybody <laughs> to help me? No, I... that was we organizers got them free, so that's okay. We'll, we'll touch base right, with well, Leslie and make sure she came out okay. But that was what we were thinking is okay. that she'd be okay. Want we'll to make oh, sure I wasn't the one you guys were talking about not paying for the shirt? <laughs> no. Now, okay. is, this a, is this something they can sign up for when they do the registration if they wanted to purchase a t-shirt? 
We'll, what we'll do is we'll set up a link through his website probably once we have them up and people can go ahead and order them. They'll get them the day of the Ed Camp, so we'll just put their name with it. So we'll send out a follow-up email on that. It sounds like everybody wants it, so um, keep an eye out on emails. Um, I think we should have everybody's emails who are here now, so I'll send one out with the information, and if you have any feedback or comments, we'll have to make a quick decision to make sure we get them on time and everything. I would say your your most your biggest priority is you need to get your Eventbrite registration set up, uh, just ASAP um, yeah. to get that to get that going. Because what that also lets you do is send out a, uh, broadcast messages to everybody who's registered. So um, just have yeah. have somebody go ahead and set that up, and you can use ours as a model. Copy whatever you want, and <clears throat> I think the main thing you need there is you got your location, and you need a draft schedule. So that might be something that we could kick around a little bit as far as what your schedule might look like, because that way people are going to know what the day is going to be. You know, if if they can, if they're going to stay till lunch, if they're going to stay the whole day. Uh, but the, you know, you don't have to have a lot of detail other than session one, session two, et cetera, and figure out how you're going to do your networking, and you know. Easiest thing for lunch is to have people on their own, um, but that that would be my two cents: is get your event right up with a schedule. Can somebody help with that? For yeah. if, have you guys done? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm willing to do event event right. Yeah, I, I I'd be happy to take that piece on. Okay. Can somebody share that with Lisa, the one from Oklahoma City, so that she's got a idea of the schedule and? You bet. Um, yeah, this is we've got. I've I've started a, a Google Doc. Um, I think is everybody seeing that at the top of the screen? No, I just started I'm one not. too, just to kind of put a order together. Okay, because I started one. And it said shared notes, so it's like hang. And it says hangout notes. Um, look on the left side if you click yeah. on your on your Google Drive. Um, see if you can see hangout notes. I'm in. Yeah, there's more than one document. Let me see. Right. So if you click on the one that says hangout notes. Okay. That's I'll rename. Yep. I'll rename that Ed Camp Tulsa organizer planner afterwards. Yeah. Sure. And so if you I'm, get if and if you're on a tablet, you may not be able to find it, Rob. I don't. You won't. You basically you have to be on a computer to be able to use some of the features. Okay. Um, can everybody just to make sure we have add their email on here and maybe their Twitter? Would that work? Sure. I just added the schedule to the chat. Okay, and I've got it in the in the document as well. Um, what do you all think about a website? I mean, do you do you want a website? Do you think, Toby? Do you think they need one? Will Eventbrite just work? Or you know, I think we're oh shoot, hello. Yeah, yeah you just there. I think we're so I think we're so close to the time. I think a website is just going to be hard to do. I think if you start pushing this on social media like Twitter, um, it's going to be helpful. Um, I was just going through uh, EdCamp Omaha's site just to see you know what kind of stuff could I share that. That's really handy to have, and it's it's again we're you know we're a month out, so I, I think uh, push with social media this time, get some grassroots, get some word of mouth going, and uh, and next year you really start building your presence a little more. You um, can set up a Google what? site though as a minimum. I mean, the benefit yeah. of doing that is you're yeah. going to have stuff like your schedule, like your you know restaurants. Like yeah, I mean like a full blown website. Yeah, though, yeah, you know, like registered with. With uh, uh, a domain registrar. Wes, can your WordPress be duplicated um, and then just scaled back to something? Yeah. You know, we could uh, really easily set up, like if we wanted to do something off of off of the EdCamp OKC. I don't know that we want to do that. Um, it's twelve bucks to register a domain. That's not that's not that big of a deal. So I'll be happy if we want to to set that up to you know to have a WordPress. Um, that we could register, but we could also just set up a Google site. Uh, you guys could set up a Google site, and that that just might be the best thing to do here at this point because that's a space where you could have some different pages to, you know, list whatever it is that you need to list, and that's nice because then when you put a tweet, you you have that link that you can go to, and it's more than 140 characters. I just um, posted on our chat here the link to EdCamp Kansas's, which is like. A lot simpler. It's a blog. EdCampKansas.blogspot.com. KS. EdCamp KS. Um, maybe we could just, just set up something like that. I mean, somebody could probably set that up in like an hour and a half. Does that make sense? Basically, we just have... So I, I agree with Toby. I say we just get going with the Eventbrite and everything else, and we get a website set up as we can, and then you just start letting people know and posting stuff there. What, but what about... Oh, well, I was going to say, since... 
since several of us have blogs, I wouldn't mind putting a, a, a post out there that has links to some of these other Google Docs where it could just yeah. be the ed camp and I could update it there and people could just go to the, the blog and access it. Yeah, that, we could, that would work. Yeah, absolutely. Sh short, we could do that to get started, and then if if somebody wants to volunteer to kind of create a, a larger website, then when that's ready, we could switch over. Okay. I, I I do think that would be a good thing to have some some space, whether it's a Google site, a blogger site, you know, something that people will be able to link to. Hey, I think something. I'm not trying to change the subject, but one of the immediate concerns that I see is doing some immediate networking with like some stakeholders in the Tulsa area. Otherwise, you're just going to get like OKC and Stillwater transplants, mm -hmm. like um, you know, like from the big districts that have a big voice that are you know in tune with technology that can put out blasts on Twitter and things like that. And you probably ought to do a press release, um, have a PDF flyer. That's what we've done in the past is yeah. a, a PDF single page flyer that people can print, um, a press release that you can point you know news media to. Um, it is good to have you know with a website you could have you know some of those things uh, linked on it but like Dan said it it could just be a site on blogger or something like that. It doesn't have to be. Who who did our PDF flyer? Would who would they be willing to just adapt that to the? And console? yeah, I, Luke created our logos for that, so I think we could definitely have him help with that. Well, and I could see if um, John's going to probably do a logo for the shirt. So whatever logo he comes up with, we could just yeah, transfer it on the send flyer. That, send that to me, and I don't mind doing the flyer. Okay. Yeah, these are all things we need to get done like in the next few days. Really, to be honest, we're we're working on a short timeline here. If we want, because those flyers, then we can email it to all these districts and say, "Can you put this up in your school? Can you email this out? It's got all the information someone needs to know what to do." And Rob and Lisa, some of the communication chains that we've used are the state's listservs. You know, technology listservs. You know, any kind of listserv that's associated with, you know, librarians. We've flooded those. OTA. Uh, COSA, OSSBA, we've we've done it all, so that's a great way to get a word out as well, and that flyer will help there too. I know Lisa's already brought it up at some of her consortium meetings with the other surrounding districts, and great. Uh, we've got a lot of connections in Union, Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Sand Springs, the yeah. surrounding area, so I don't think it will be too difficult to get the word out. What, one thing I'd mention is, have you all looked at the um, the the how to host an EdCamp PDF document? I think yes. I shared that with you, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, because I th I think one of the biggest things is you know ed camps just don't hey there it is don't just you know don't have the typical vendor vendor focus. So if somebody wants to sponsor breakfast, that's what we've done the last two years with a with a free breakfast. I have a um, sponsor. Oh my gosh! Ooh, I think I shared this with Rob, awesome. but uh, awesome. I serve on the executive board for OTA, and we voted last week to sponsor the Ed Camp Tulsa. Breakfast. Tell you what, there they you were go. excited. Got it done. That is great. <laughs> yeah. So those kind of sponsorships are great, um, and but you know just uh, yeah, if you've got that document and kind of go with the spirit of that, you're on the right page. So. Hey Rob, what I, I think what I'm saying more specifically is getting those people in on this meeting, and not just talking to them because yeah. like you're going to be talking to people that see this as professional development and that's it. And this is a collaboration; it's not traditional mm -hmm. PD. So lumping it into that category is what they're going to do mentally. We need them in on these meetings so that they can hear and listen and see other you know state leaders and district leaders and teachers and that's what I'm saying. All right, Lisa and I will talk about that, and we'll come up with a list of people we can invite to this. Yeah, and I think I long-term ideally is that a lot of us phase out, and Tulsa, you know, people take over this whole thing, and not necessarily, you know, not that we're left out, but that we get a, a core group of Tulsa people who are going to get involved. They're going to own it, own this, and run it, run it that. year to year. Yeah. 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 Yes. Or southeastern Oklahoma people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Tammy, do you have a date, by the way, for that that you're looking at yet? Uh, we kind of are kicking around one, yeah, but not not nothing in stone yet. So what? I guess I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I think you know once once uh, we we start soon. I, I mean, I I think we all start tweeting a lot about Egg Camp Tulsa and just start really pushing it. Um, I know I'm going to get to come for part of the day. I, I won't be able to stay the whole day, but. Um, I'm super excited about it, but you know, I think we start now, 
and start telling your people who are on social media. Um, as soon as you can get that flyer ready with a logo, it's going to be very helpful uh, that you can start attaching that to tweets and saying, go check out this blog with the information. Because, again, you're, you're on a tight table. I mean, a tight tight turnaround. So, so what is your what's your space limit? Like how many people are you going to accommodate where you're planning to have it? You know, what with are we limited by the number of people that we can accommodate in the large presentation hall? What is it? That was 200, right? I to be honest yeah. in in the amount of time we have, I don't think we're going to hit over 200 actually right. attending. So, mm -hmm. I think we're going to be good and they have plenty of classrooms. Right. And we also, yeah. in addition to the classrooms and the large presentation space, we have two other, one, one on the third floor and one on the second floor, kind of open areas with cafe-type tables and seating that I think would be great for this as well. Good. Uh, let, let me throw this out there, Rob and Lisa. Um, this is something my buddy Josh Allen, who does Omaha, and this is some... Uh, um, another guy I know who, who put egg camps uh, together. Here's what they say. It, it's as simple as you want it to be. And I think Egg Camp Tulsa this year is going to be pretty simple. But mm -hmm. here's the idea. You get them some coffee in the morning. You get them a bagel or a muffin or a donut or something. Chicken. You give them chicken. space. A chicken, chicken biscuit, biscuit. Whatever. Chicken biscuit. You, you give them this stuff and you get out of their way. You give, yeah. them, you give them a space to talk and you say, don't do a PowerPoint. Just talk. Talk and communicate and collaborate and and network. And that's what the day is about. And, and, we, and just have a conversation. And then everything else, really, just get out of their way. You don't need to plan, 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 plan. And we, uh, really just get the space going. I completely agree. And we put Ed Kemp Kansas together on very short notice. We had very little that we gave people. Um, the only things we had to get is the information for people to know what, what's going on. And so that's what we need to do. Can we maybe split this up and each commit to, like, doing one thing to help getting the ball rolling here tonight, um, whether it's helping with the getting the information PDF that we'll, we can mail out, somebody maybe getting a blog spot or something, some kind of website with basic information, just well, I like think this. That's Rob. I think you volunteered your blog. Yep, I'll put it out on the blog. Okay. And then I've got the flyer. Okay, so that's two. And Tammy, I will I will help to get our design done. I'll Great. get on them on that, and then I'll send you guys emails about design and T-shirts. So should we put what we're? Yeah, should we maybe put like after our name here or something? What we're each doing that way we know who to contact. And I uh, love Tubby's suggestion about the oil derrick. Um, it is, what does everyone else think about that? I, no, I, I want the There's, oil man with an apple. Funny. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's a great question. <laughs> it. I love, I love it. That, is that copyrighted? <laughs> no. It needs to be. We're Jonathan Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have to pay the city of Tulsa if we use the Derek Man? No. They use it on shirts. All these local t shirt companies have it on shirts. All right. Just making sure. Holding okay. It. So after our, our little um, our emails and Twitter handle, I'll put what we're responsible for. So I'm going to. And so if you can add in. Um, what you're responsible for, and uh, Rob, we'll add it in for you that you're doing it. Um, that way we can just get this ball rolling, and should we try to talk again in a week? Is that doable, just to see that we've got these basic things up? I would yeah. recommend weekly meetings. Yeah, I think and so. I, and, I, and I got me a job. Go for it. Well, I'm, I'm a professional gopher, so I'm still, I still got that title. But um, <laughs> I want to do a tweet-up afterwards at Kel Kinney's. High five. <laughs> and I and I will take care. I mean, like I won't pay the bill because I'm just a teacher. <laughs> but but I will I will call them and make try and make arrangements. And I want to try and get sponsors because one of the ed camps I went to, the one I went to in Philadelphia, they had appetizers and stuff, and that really brought a lot of people there. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get some. Maybe instead of doing something before, which a lot of us have a hard time going to the night before, I think maybe we talk to Josh about maybe doing some appetizers or something. At Kel Kinney's for us, may bring more people there to talk. Would that be okay? Or am I jumping ahead of myself? Because I just, I love I Kel think Kinney's. That sounds glorious. Okay. Kel Kinney's on Cherry Street. Yep. Yep. And I, it's just because I like their fish and chips. Nothing else. Maybe nice. a little bit. Yeah, and you got now you guys know that's a waste. Actually... That's a. That's a nice trot, though. I mean, and, yeah, and that's, that's normal, was, though. Dan. I mean, it's yeah. A lot of egg camps, it's it's a drive. So it's the other side of town. Yeah. 
They okay. have opened a branch in, in South Tulsa now, though. So there's Is one at 71st and Yale. Yeah. That might be handier. 71st I mean, and Yale? The question is, yeah, I mean, I think either way, I th it depends. I mean, most people are probably in the area, so I don't know if it's a big deal or not, but... Well, or, location. or if you guys have another idea, I mean, or another place of venue, I just, I think we, I, I really like the collaboration afterwards because I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people that go home, but there's a lot of us that are still on that, that Ed Camp High that really want to sit and talk about it, and I think that bringing more people to that conversation would be good too. So. so so what would be a place in that whole Riverwalk area? Is there anywhere near there where we could where we could probably find twenty five seats together if we if we needed to, we could contact you. And that would be great information again to put on our basic information, Rob, you know, here's our here's how you contact us. Here's the date. Here's where the after event is. Are we gonna do a tweet up on Friday night? Yes. Okay. So then a tweet up, a Friday night tweet up. <laughs> be my, sure, be sure to bring in Josh on that too, because you know he's kind of in charge of Oklahoma tweet up. So, um, Rob, I'm I'm going to give you the link to our the EdCamp Kansas site, just as one you can look to for the type of information they have up as an example. Okay. I'll tweet that to you. Los Cabos is a restaurant that's along the river there. That's got an outside. It's not outside, but it's under glass. Do they have chips and salsa? <laughs> I believe they do. That's margaritas and things like that. Yep. <laughs> They'll be the Friday and Saturday night for them though are pretty high traffic evenings, so that may be a concern. Right. Well, we usually finish up kind of. Bef we'll probably beat a lot of the dinner crowd mm -hmm. um, because you know when we get there we'll be uh, like five or four between four thirty and five. Yeah. So that's a good thing is we sometimes will beat the dinner crowd on that stuff. I don't know. Ann and I closed the place down, so you guys speak yeah, for yourself. That's true, and I, I'll have a place to stay there too. So I I dropped I'll... into the chat and the doc um, a draft schedule. We talked tonight that we felt our networking time at the beginning was was a little bit too long, and that it might be good because some people will leave after lunch to go ahead and squeeze in another session in the morning. So anyway, you guys can obviously modify that however you want, but that's that's a, a a change from what we had done that would, if I did it right, uh, give you three 50-minute sessions before lunch and then come back for, for two more sessions. Lisa, do you know how many that the planetarium seats? Is it about 100? Yes. Okay. Because we'll, we'll figure out a show that we can do there where we can rotate people through or have some set times where they can go and experience the planetarium. It, yeah, I think that's a cool little added bonus. It's neat. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, do you get Rob? Do you guys both have access to the Google Docs document? The planning document. I documents? can't. I can't see it right now. I'm on my tablet. And I can't toggle back and forth, so I'm not okay. certain. Okay. Some reason I couldn't just now tweet you, Rob. So I just added to that example site on that document. So just okay. make sure we get that to you because it has all our information for contacting us and okay. everything else we've said so far. Yeah, if I don't get it, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, for next week, if we're if we're going to try a Tuesday meeting, I would have to be about eight o'clock would be the earliest. I've got enrollment stuff, but I could do Wednesday would be earlier. I think is eight o'clock okay with me? Is that okay with everybody else? It's a good time. Yeah, that's fine. And if people can't make it, this isn't something. If you miss, you miss. You know, um, of course, you two are kind of our go-to on a few things, so. It's good to have Rob and Lisa, but other people, you know, you know, and and again, invite people if you have someone that you know is interested. Teachers, other people that want to help, invite them in and have them join the hangout. I know Kevin's Kevin's interested in helping too. Great. Dan, do you want to take the lead on then starting the calls and starting the hangouts? Yeah, that's fine. I can I can help start the hangouts. I don't think I have any reason why I can't next week. So right. yeah. I will not be available Tuesday. I will be at the cheer banquet that evening. Okay. So I'm sure we're not going to be finished by eight. That's I'm not. You know that doesn't mean we have to do it at a different time. But uh, Rob would have to hold down the fort on the jinx rep there. That's okay. That everyone's not going to make them all. As long as we have one of you, I think we'll probably be good. And Lisa, one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Was one tip on the Eventbrite is <clears throat> when you set it up. 
I think maybe by default the only required are first and last name and email, and I think we've mm -hmm. also add people, you know, do their, I think it says company, but their organization, um, yeah, district, how they, how they, maybe we added a question about how they heard about it, so there's just, when you, feel free to contact me and I'll uh, shoot you my, my phone if you've got any questions about, you know, setting that up, because you can, you can change it as far as the um, content of what it says, but I, but I don't know, the requirements and that kind of stuff, you may just want to have that set up at, at the beginning and it's it's not that big a deal if, if you I mean however you do it it's gonna have people's email and that's gonna let you um, you know blast out emails to people and and track who's there and check them in and all that kind of okay, stuff. Okay so. is Wes's pirate hat distracting <laughs> anyone else but me? <laughs> you having trouble taking me seriously? I can... <laughs> I'm used to it. Yeah. <laughs> you have other hats too Wes? Oh yeah, there's all kinds of hats in here. <laughs> you should see his crown. <laughs> he usually like, wears the crown, huh? I'll just put on my crown. Here. Oh, there's a new one. Uh, yeah, that's nice. All right, so all I right. Think we've got a plan here. We'll get the event bright set up. I'll get the blog set up. Uh, we'll get somebody working on the flyer. Uh, Dan, you're working on t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And. If we can get those things done between ne now and next Tuesday, we'll be in. Yeah, and hope hopefully we can get if we can get the Eventbrite and stuff set up, we can just start sending that out. You know, um, yeah. that yeah, those things are as soon as possible. Then we can also just start promoting before even next week starts. We can get some of it out there. Okay. What do you all think about that draft schedule for the for the Eventbrite? Do you like do you like that as far as trying to do three in the morning and it just basically took thirty minutes out of the networking time. And pushed lunch back a little bit. Well, I did hear from some people they wish there was a little bit more in the morning. They felt like they went to one thing and then it was like over. So I know there yeah. was two, but so I think I like, three in the morning is better. I like that yeah. too. So the one thing I would say is you might think about making that session ten minutes longer. You know, it's 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 hard for that first session. You know, people are still a little reticent and maybe don't know what's going on. But by that second session, they're ready to start talking, and so that fifty minutes sometimes seems truncated. But Again, you guys get to decide that. Well, and those are those are final details, right? Let's get if we get the basic information out. You can tweak the schedule, yeah. We can tweak the schedule. Um, Lisa and Rob, I just want to make sure I got your information right on the document. Lisa at jinxms.com. Does that work mm -hmm. as an email? Uh, yes. And then we I've got her Twitter on there. If any of you guys aren't following her, and then Rob Miller at jinxms.com. Okay, that works. That, that works. Okay, so I think we should have pretty much everybody's. Jonathan, we don't have your information on there. Just yep. FYI. I was just waiting for the right time. Okay. Okay. Well, let's there get it is. done. But but um, <coughs> once uh, Lisa, once you have the Eventbrite set up and the link seems to be working and everything, let it. You know, you can use the official account to get that out, and we'll all start spreading the word on our individual accounts. Yes. And Rob, I'll send you the link to this. When we do a Google Hangout on air, when we record, it'll it'll have a link that you can embed. So if you want to have an organizer page on the site you're setting up, and I'm sure lots of people will want to watch this extremely exciting meeting we've had tonight. So mm -hmm. anyway, the link will be there if anybody wants to check it out. Excellent. Thank you, Wes. All right. It was good talking to everybody. I guess we'll see you next week. Cool, y'all. Have a great night. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.